Hey everybody, this is gonna be our first video on this new mare that I'm training for a family. Well, this is the mare that I have to train that I got took payment of that young filly for uh, training this mare, if that makes any sense. Okay, so it's gonna be habits to get into. Good girl, good girl. Oh, what a good girl. So the first habit, I've been working on this mare for a week already, is to come to me when I go to go in to ride her, okay? She typically doesn't come to the stall door like this, and we don't want to go in chasing a horse around a stall. Come on, good girl. So we're gonna approach her several times, make her think it's her idea to come to us. Yeah, and if she turns away from us, we're gonna get her attention back on us. Here, let's try it again. She has a lot of emotional trauma. We'll call it emotional damage that this horse has been through because she's been to a professional trainer before that was very old school and uh, didn't do things quite the same way I do. So I'm trying to make friends with her and I'm trying to make it not a traumatic experience each time somebody comes to ride her. See how she wants to turn away? Come here. Oh yeah, I'm gonna invite her up to me. That's a good girl. That was so good. I even carry a few treats around. Now, I don't really believe in um, rewarding horses with treats more than I do rewarding them with the release of pressure. However, like I say, this horse, every experience this horse has had in her life has been negative because she was with a really hard-handed uh, trainer before. So I am trying to make her a friend and trying to make her a family horse for this group of people. So I'm trying to make every everything she has to do with me a positive experience so there's your first habit make sure your horse is coming to you if she doesn't come to you when she's in the stall what you got to do is make a noise or something to get her attention put a little pressure on her till she faces up and remove the pressure hi baby come on good girl now Next thing is, I'm gonna shut this off and I'm gonna groom her. See how dirty she is? I don't need a clean horse to ride one, but instead of rushing through the saddling process, I'm gonna spend at least 10 minutes talking to her, keeping her calm, and brushing all this junk off. So you'll get to see that when, she, when she's done. Okay, in this grooming process, I want to talk about a few do's and don'ts. So the grooming is to get the horse to be calm and used to you touching her. It's not a tra it's not a training exercise. So what I'm not going to do is use a bunch of show sheen or sprays that she's not used to um, having happen to her. You know, like if she's not used to a spray bottle, you don't do it here tied up to the hitching post. You go in the round pen and you teach them a cue to stand still if they move. When you spray, you send them away and you use pressure and release and you do groundwork training with them. This here is to get the horse to lick and chew like that right there, to get her to, get her to enjoy what's happening to her. You see that release that she had? And let me show you why that is. I'm using a hair comb and you see the round beads on the end of the hair comb? Everybody's seen those before. I have learned just a trick that this feels so good to them and it's like the horses, you know, I equate it to them grooming each other in their herds and bonding. So I don't use it in their hair. I use it for a body brush. And then when they're shedding real big, you can take a, a uh, comb and get the hair out of the hairbrush and do it all over their body and desensitize them with it and just spend a little bit of time with your horse before you go to ride it. Then we'll start the saddling up process. Okay, so this mare is broke to ride, but she will buck a little bit, or at least she will with other people. Knock on wood, she doesn't with me because I take my time with her. Come on, baby, move over. Oh, that's a good girl. She's showing some fear there because she knows what's gonna happen next. So I'm gonna wait and get her calmed down somehow. You wanna see this?
and for some reason she's showing a little extra fear today. So if a horse is showing a lot of fear, all I'm gonna take that knot out and just let her stay there like that. Cause if she wants to run backwards, I'd rather her run backwards, you know, and not be tied up and I'll get a hold of the rope. But I'm not gonna wimp around cause she's five years old. She needs to be able to get a saddle blanket thrown up on her without fear, you know? So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw this up there a few times. Just talk normal. Good girl. Hey, you're okay. Sometimes if you give a horse that's nervous right now a big sigh like that, they'll sigh back. And that releases all kinds of tension. Yeah, good girl. Good girl. Then I'm gonna get my saddle. And the important thing about saddling a horse that's nervous, see how she knows if she moves to the left, she can block my path that I'm coming to. I'm not gonna holler at her or nothing, I just move her back. Yeah, oh, baby. I'll just throw it up there. Okay. Get it situated. Here's a good little tip. See this screw? It's in every saddle at the bottom of the horn. You want that past the shoulder blade by about an inch. So you can reach in there, feel where the shoulder blade ends. That's where your saddle goes. And every Western saddle that I've ever seen has a screw there. Now don't get it confused with this one. Your saddle will be too far back. It's the one coming right down at the base of the tree. Well, now just to keep her calm, I could flop this girth down. And I rode her yesterday, so it's set up for already. Once I get my saddle on, I like to lift up just a little bit of slack underneath the saddle horn. Come back around. Now here's the habit on a green horse that I want you to learn. When girting this up, we're not going to even tie it the first time. Just get it enough to where you're somewhat, oh baby, oh. And even in the middle of this, we'll just stop and give her a chance to do another good exhale or get a lick and chew in would be perfect. But anyway, we're not even, I'm not even gonna put this through anything. That's two fingers width of tightening. I have a good high cantle and a narrow tree on this saddle, so I know it's not gonna fall off. It doesn't need to be tightened right now. We'll tighten it later. We'll walk her around, we'll go to the round pin, let her stand for a little while before we ever tighten that. Because like I said, she has a history of bucking so she might be a little bit humpy if you would tighten, or cinchy, I guess is what they would call that, or she'll hump up. And you first put a girth, girth on her, and I don't need that for nothing. Like I always say, I'm a horse trainer, not a cowboy. So this is a cavison. Not all breeds need those or use those, but the Fox Trotter breed, it's kind of a necessity because we have them lean on the bit more than other breeds do. And by leaning on the bit, I'm gonna explain this in a video um, with a fully trained Fox Trotter show mare. But it's kind of like if you're trying to throw a punch and you're hitting air compared to hitting a punching bag or hitting your pillow, you can follow through with a punch when you're hitting something way harder than you can follow through hitting air. Matter of fact, you'd hurt yourself if you just tried to hit air. Bang. And when they're working their hardest, these Fox Trotters, and see, it's got a little bit of slack to it. As I train her, that'll get a little bit more snug. But anyway, leaning on the bit is like that punching that, imp, you know, punching air. If they're leaning on that bit, they can get more uh, head bob and rhythm and reach and effort into each stride. That's why we do it. And that's why uh, I'll have to cover bits in another video, but let's go over to the pin. Okay, the next habit to get in is to not be in a hurry. So what I like to do, I'll bring a young horse like this that hasn't been rode much, a newly started one. I'll go under my saddle and over it. There's enough slack where she can stand there and be good if she wants to be good. It also gets that mouth warmed up, meaning that they're gonna you know, know there's a bit in her mouth, tries to put her head down, it'll bump her. She'll have to learn that it, it'll stand there. And then I'll just go put my cowboy boots on or put my spurs on or whatever. 
Now this particular mare, I actually don't wear spurs with. I wear spurs with 99% of my horses because 99% of the time I start them myself so they have no emotional trauma. This mare is a little bit uh, traumatized and she's out of a reactive bloodline. So I'm trying to make everything real positive and real safe for her. On my horses that have no fear of humans, no trauma, I can use spurs because I don't use them to make them go. I use them for steering, for guiding, mainly for a cue to trot and a cue to drop their heads. I'll lift on their midsection with my spurs as I'm riding and teach a cue to drop their head. So I use spurs for lots of things. This mare's so reactive, we're not gonna use spurs on her. I'm gonna give her five minutes now just to walk around and realize she's saddled and then we'll come back in here and uh, start doing some groundwork before we get on. Come here, babe. Good. When they come towards you or face up, you back off. That's a good girl. And she stopped. Good girl. And we're gonna back up again. Come here. Come here. Oh, that's so good. If their attention is on you and you back up, nine times out of 10, they'll follow. Now, before I do anything, we gotta remember that we haven't tightened this saddle. So now we'll just get, we're just gonna take what she'll give us. That's about how much she'd give us this time. And we'll do that one more time before we get on her. And now she's got plenty of rain. Well, she moved off without me asking her that way. So I'm gonna change her directions. And we're gonna stay calm, because this isn't about exercising a young horse enough to where they're not too hyper to buck you off. What it's about is getting their attention on me and control. So her ear just left me, her attention's off. There, it's back, that's good. And I'm gonna wait till she's really giving me her eye and her ear, and I'll show you when that happens. Right, she's probably gonna do it here for too long. Pay attention, girl. There's a good spot. And I back up and she, she comes up to me. Good girl. The next habit that I want you to get into is your state of mind and the horse's state of mind. I am a man of faith and believe in um, Jesus and God. So what I do is I'll pray this specific prayer each time. <sighs> Lord, thank you for this horse and for the opportunity, but I thank you for giving me dominion. Then I usually will say the horse's name and her name is Pearl. I say, Pearl, God gave me dominion over you. So let your will fall right in line with my will in Jesus' name. And you see how I get calmer and that horse got calmer and licked and chewed. It works every time. I say it's the Holy Spirit. If you're an atheist, that's fine. Do whatever mantra you need to do to get yourself in line, whether it's meditation, um, humming, whatever you, I don't know what you do if you're an atheist, I've never been one. But the, th the thing is to get yourself centered and calm because these horses are designed by God to understand what we're putting out. They pick up our signals. So she just felt me get calm in my spirit and she got calm and started licking and chewing, which is a sign of submissiveness and calmness. If you're a scientist and you want to call that a placebo effect, that's fine, because placebo's real, and if you got faith, then you know we got dominion on them from Genesis. Then when you get on, the next step is don't go anywhere. Don't get in a hurry. Sit here, talk to her. She's licking and chewing, so that's plenty good. When they're licking and chewing, I'll get off, Ugh. I'm fat, I should do that more eloquently. But she's licking and chewing when I got on and all four feet stayed still, so I'll walk away. And this walking away is a form of release. She followed me because she's comfortable with what I just did. Good girl. And I'm gonna even leave the pen and give her a minute off because that's gonna teach her that that was such a positive thing for that man to crawl on my back. I relaxed, he relaxed, then he got off me and left me alone because I was good and calm and relaxed. I hope he gets on me again the next time he comes in here. 
that's what she just learned. Next thing I like for y'all to do, if you're riding a green horse or a freshly started horse, before you get on them, is get them to, to give you control of their feet. Okay, so one little exercise I like to do is you just walk up and pet the hip and it doesn't move. It's because my energy was correct. Now watch, I'm gonna change my energy to pushing on that hip. And I'll let you see me do this so, and I'll have Emery film it so you can watch what my energy looks like. Good, good girl. Okay, let me repeat that with Emery filming. Okay, so first I just need to be able to walk up to the hip and pet it without it moving because my energy is not on that hip, okay? Then I'm going to put my energy, my focus of my eyes, my hand, I'm going to get down like a predator and I'm going to move just that hip. Good girl. I'm going to do it to this side. Good girl. Now I'll just walk back up to that hip again without it moving, hopefully. Good girl. Pet it to a stop. Now this horse has never been taught to flex, so we're going to work on that. I worked on it yesterday. Just slight give and takes. Good. Now, she's wanting to take it back. I'm going to hold it for a second, make sure she gets soft. There, she's getting, whoa. And she want, wait for her to get soft. Easy, babe. Oh, that's pretty good. That was sweet. We would call that good. Maybe do it to this side. Okay. okay. When she starts moving, you can pet a little bit on the butt to stop them. There, she got soft. That's good enough. For newbie, that's fine. Now we're gonna back up a little. On the back up, as soon as the front foot moves, I want you to drop, back up, drop. That's good. Doesn't have to be much, just trying to get a start. Then I might mount up again. No, stand still. We're gonna pet all over. No, don't move. I'm trying to keep her from moving without getting in her mouth because I just want her to learn that being mounted does not mean going forward. Then I'm even going to ask her to back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Good. Back up. Oh, good. I want her to be guessing when we're going to move forward. That's why I might get on and off four or five times. And then yesterday when I rode her, I guarantee I sat there for 10 minutes before I took off for the first time. I'm going to tighten this up again now that it, the next time I get on, I really am going to ride. So I'm going to go ahead and get this snug enough to where I feel safe if something were to happen. And then for all the viewers out there that I know will be telling me about safety, I may even humble myself enough to put a helmet on <laughs> because I know this mare has a history of bucking. But as a man of faith, I find it hard because I know that, or at least I believe that Jesus is my helmet and I have uh, dominion and I've prayed for her to keep me safe and to not buck. So. I don't think this horse is ever going to buck with me. It bucked with their owner, bucked with the last trainer, but it'll never buck with me. So wearing a helmet is kind of going against what I believe is going to happen. But I'm telling you habits you should get into, not habits that I'm into. Your habits should be to wear the helmet because helmets are smart. Okay, so she's being a good girl. So now I'm just going to go ahead and mount her for the third time. And she's pretty much knows we're not going to move this time. So while I take this little break and sit here on her, let me tell you about her. She's a five-year-old mare. There's a family that's uh, in the mid lower middle class like us, you know, where they, you know, they can take a vacation, but they have to save up for it. And they can buy a nice thing, but they have to save up for it. They can't just go do it. So that's exactly the kind of family that I'm wanting to help as a professional trainer. That's why I went professional last October. 
So this will be my first horse setting up for show. Cause like I say, they're not wanting a trail horse. They're wanting to show with me this year. So very excited about that. Now, uh, if you guys go back to the video of the mean or scared horse, the short where I show the mean little filly uh, trying to bite me and then taking a bite of grain and I'm just trying to get to know her. This mare is of the same bloodline as that filly. So she has the temperamental proclivity to be jumpy and less personable anyway. So I'm taking all that into account with how I train her. However, that same bloodline is one of the showiest and best bloodlines in the Foxtrotter breed right now. So it does produce some quality. Now she's standing extremely quiet. So this would be a good time for me to take off, walk. So a couple of the things I'm trying to work on with her is get her to calm down enough to where I can touch her with my legs on her sides and her not feel threatened. And I want the calmer she walks and the slower she walks, the bigger I can get her to walk. Now, what do I mean by that? What I mean is slow is smooth and smooth is fast. So I'm wanting her to take bigger steps at a slower rate instead of faster steps or shorter steps at a faster rate because that will increase reach, rhythm, and head shape, and to keep her square, and to keep her calm. So I'm trying to keep her head down because a horse with her head up is an excited horse. I'm trying to stay nice and easy on her mouth. I've got a really easy bit on her mouth that gives her more slack the calmer she is. It's a sliding D-ring snaffle. And she's walking off real square and good here. So I'll probably do this for, actually, Emery open the gate. Whoa, she's gonna be this good. We'll just go ahead and go for a ride. Now, one of the big problems I'm having with this horse is she likes to pace. And uh, by pace, what that is, is both feet on the same side are going forward and backwards in unison. So the right front and the back front or back right are moving forward at the same time. That is a lateral gait and we want a bilateral gait where there's always one foot on the ground at all times. So moving, you know, kind of moving in a diagonal pattern instead of horizontal pattern. And I'll show you how I get that. Okay, she had a good little break. So I'm gonna get back on her. Now, she is fully shod. And I've been doing this since 1998. Never had a horse get hurt yet. So just before people start saying something, I just wanted to put that disclaimer out there. And before JR continues, in case you're wondering if JR and the horse might get run over by a train, this is not an active railroad track. This is a secret weapon I had to keep horses from pacing, which I just explained what a pace was. What's cool about the Fox Trotter breed is there's so many ways to train them. You can take the worst aspects of the big lick community, the plantation high shod walking horses and the cruelty that goes into training them you can apply it to a fox trotter and get good results in the show ring or you can use horsemanship apply it to and love and apply it to a fox trotter and get good results in the show ring this mare last year was trained exclusively with heavy chains to try to get her to trot and she was never able to trot without heavy chains on her front legs so I'm not gonna use a chain on her at all because that caused emotional trauma to her. But what I'll do here is she's not able to pace with the with this going rock, wood, rock, wood, rock, wood, every 18 inches being a new track. And I'm gonna use my legs and give her a voice cue and a leg cue to trot. Right there, she's trotting. She's trotting. Now walk, walk. Good girl, good girl. And I'm gonna give her a release on the reins and everything because she trotted when I asked. 
Now I'm going to give it the same cue. Trot. Easy. Trot a little fast. I'm going to get it where I want it. Right there. Now walk. Walk. Easy. As soon as she gives me it where I want it, that's when we stop doing it. Because I want to be the first, I want to be the person, not her be the person that initiates stopping that gear, okay? I don't want her to lose that good trot before I tell her to walk. Let's do it again. Trot. Walk, walk. That time was perfect. Ooh. What do we do when a young horse does something perfect? We get off. Okay, why do we get off? Because we're teaching her, oh, if I do that, I get, a, I get rewarded. This is what he wants. They are smarter than we give them credit for, okay? They're able to put it together in their minds that trotting that way is the best way to get this old fat guy off my back, okay? They're lazy animals by nature. Horses want to conserve energy because that's how they survive in the wild. So she'll put two and two together and she will give me the trot. So the owner has never been able to get her to trot without chains on. Let's go back to the barn and seeing what I taught here, if I can get her to trot in the barn. When I'm working on walking instead of trotting, I'm just look, working on keeping that head square and where I can hear each individual footstep nice and slow and in time and then eventually when she's get doing everything right i'll use my hips and my pelvis in the saddle to encourage her to take a little bit more stride listen to that rhythm that's a nice square walk and watch the head bob the more head bob i'm getting the more effort i'm getting right now she's concerned with the bit she's concerned with where the dogs are so you're trying to get a hold of their brain and get their brain soft so that so that you can get your steps you want. But she's giving me a pretty decent walk right now. Now she's speeding up. Yep, that speeding up was a sign of things to come. Easy bay. There we go again. That's better. You feel that? You see that? Okay, we'll pick it up back in the barn for the trot. Okay, so I have given her a break. Good girl. We're back at the barn after doing our lesson down there. And let me tell you how I expect this is gonna go. Whoa. She's not used to trotting unaided. And I'm gonna give her that cue that we just taught her to trot in here. And if she gives it to me, great. But I'm not expecting it right off. I expect her to go a lap, maybe half a lap two laps and fight me and she might start slinging her head and getting mad and I'm going to keep from level 0 0.1 to a level 100 pressure on her whatever I have to do till she gives me that trot then I'm going to teach y'all the next habit you need to get into when training a young horse and this is universal for any discipline we're my discipline is fox trotters so uh I'm trying to get a trot. Now I'm not necessarily trying to get a fox trot. I'll take a long trot, I'll take a hard trot, I'll take a any type of trot there is. A trot like a quarter horse, trot like a carriage horse, or a fox trot would be great. And at first I'm gonna take her a lap around this barn to let her see everything, because I haven't rode in the barn yet. This is only this is only my fourth ride on this horse, really. Okay, now I'm gonna ask her. I'll wait for her to be in a good mental state. She's looking out the door right now, so I'm gonna wait for that. Looking at the four-wheeler. Okay. Trot. Trot. There's a pace. Trot. More pace. I'm lifting with my heels. Trot. Trot. I'm not going to stop till I get it. Trot. There it is. 
trot good. Walk, walk, ooh. And now here's the fifth habit or the final habit. That mare just did great. She trotted, get off, loosen your saddle, take the bit out of her mouth, and put her up. People get excited when they're training and they say, oh, I'm getting my trot, I'm getting my trot, I'm getting my canter, I'm getting my lope, I'm getting my lead, I'm getting my X, Y, Z, my barrel pattern right. And they just keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Well, this brain right here is gonna tell her that trotting is my favorite thing in the world because I trotted and went from having this fight with my mouth when I was pacing to as soon as I trotted, that fat man got off my back, gave me a treat, scratched the ticks under my chin, and unsaddled me. Now I might do that again in two or three hours, and that trot will be even easier. They're a smart animal, and they can learn through pressure and release. And everything we do with them, whether you perceive it is or not, is pressure and release. Mm -hmm.